In this video, what we're going to be discussing are gases, the pressure, volume, temperature of gases. And we're going to be dealing with ideal gases. Ideal gases simply mean they are going to be gas molecules that do not interact with one another, and the actual volume of the molecules themselves are essentially nil. We'll talk about that later when we get to real gases. But the first problem states, <clears throat> a sample of sulfur hexafluoride gas, that's going to be SF6, occupies 9.10 volumes of liters of volume and has a temperature of 198 degrees Celsius. Assuming that the pressure remains constant, what temperature in degrees Celsius is needed to reduce the volume to 2.5 liters? Now, as I stated, we're going to be dealing with the ideal gas law. And the ideal gas law is PV equals nRT, where P is pressure, which would be in the units of atmospheres, V is volume, which would be in units of liters, N is going to be the number of moles, R is the ideal gas constant, which is 0 0.08206 liter, mole, uh, liter atmosphere per mole Kelvin, and T is temperature, which will be in the units of Kelvin. Now, what we have here now is we're changing something. We start out with a system that's going to be at 198 degrees Celsius, and it's going to stay at 198 degrees Celsius. Uh, I'm sorry, it's not going to stay at that temperature. We need to find the new temperature, but the pressure remains the same. Pressure does not change. And so <clears throat> anytime we're changing a situation, we can always write this in terms of the initial so one would represent the initial, so this is going to be V1, and this will be T1. Now, if we change the situation, then we can write the ideal gas law to reflect that. So it would be P2V2 is equal to NRT2. All right? Now, now that we've done this, we can write the equation in terms of NR. So what we get is we get P1 V1 all over T1 is equal to NR. Likewise, we can write this equation in terms of NR, and that's going to be P2 V2 all upon T2. All right, so the equation we have now is we have P1 V1 all upon T1 is equal to P2 V2 all upon T2 is the equation we've got. Now, what it says is it says, so now we can just start plugging in our variables into this. But we got to do a few things yet. One more thing real quick. This is in degrees Celsius, and we may have to have this in terms of, of Kelvin. So to add it to Kelvin, we put it 273.15. If we add 273.15 to 198, that's going to give us the temperature in Kelvin. And that becomes 471.15 Kelvin. So that's going to be our temperature T1 in Kelvin. Now it says in the problem that the pressure remains constant. So since the pressure is constant, then P1 is equal to P2. And so our equation gets a little bit simpler. It becomes V1 all over T1 is equal to V2 all over T2. And since we're solving for T2, we can write the equation in terms of T2. So T2 is going to be equal to V2 T1 all over T2. V1. And now we can simply plug in our data. So this is going to be, this becomes uh, 2.50 liters times T1, which is 471.15 Kelvin, divided by the initial volume, which is 9.10 liters. And you can see what happens is that the liters cancel. So we simply do this arithmetic here, and we find out that T2 is equal to 
oops, yep, 0.44 Kelvin. Now, if we want to get this in terms of degrees Celsius, we have to subtract 273.15 Kelvin from this, and this will get our temperature into degrees Celsius. And so this becomes negative 143.7 degrees Celsius. So what had to happen was in order for this sulfur hexafluoride, which possessed a volume of 9.1 liters, in order for the final volume to be 2.50 liters at the exact same pressure, we could calculate the pressure if we want to, but it's not necessarily not necessary. The temperature would have to be reduced from 471.15 Kelvin or 198 degrees Celsius to a negative 143.7 degrees Celsius. When the temperature decreases, the motion of the molecules reduces, thus reducing the volume that the gas molecules possess. If you have any questions, please let me know.